I love hoverboarding. A hoverboard is a balance board which you stand on and it makes you balance on two wheels by measuring the angle and driving you along just like a balancing robot. Now to make turns, the two halves swivel from each other, so it literally is two balancing robots next to each other. But as soon as you turn it on and put it on the ground, you'll find that doesn't actually do anything, although it does balance backwards and forwards. And the reason for that is that there's actually foot pressure switches on each half of it, so it knows when you're standing on it, and I guess that makes it easier to stand on. So if I go down and push down on those pressure pads, then we can see immediately as I swivel the two halves, it's very responsive and it will turn on the spot. And that's how you bank and make corners. So let's see what's inside. We've literally got two balancing robots next to each other. So there's two circuit boards which look fairly identical. There's a couple of different connectors on them. But basically we've got a board with B on and a board with A on. Which basically have all of the things on that you need. Including the power distribution and a sensor for the angle. Those are the motor drivers and we can see we've got wires going in for power. We've got wires going in, the three green, blue and yellow wires to the motor. And also hall effect sensors that go to those hub motors which are built into the wheels. Surprisingly the battery is only 2 amp hour. It's a 37 volt battery, so I suspect there's 10 18650 cells in there. We've been looking at it from the bottom, so if we take the board out, we can see we've got two tabs there, and those are linked to the pressure pad. So if I push that from the other side, it pushes those tabs up. And those are sensed by the back of the board, which has two optical sensors on, and that's so it can work out whether you're standing on it or not. I previously built a bicycle with an omnidirectional wheel on the front wheel. And this omnidirectional wheel has lots of little wheels all around it, which are actually skateboard wheels. And it balances just like the hoverboard or a Segway or any other balancing robot side to side. But because of the little wheels, you can still ride it like a normal bicycle. And that means you can stop and then you can go and swivel around 180 degrees and ride off in a different direction. When I did this project, I actually built the balancing electronics myself. So there's an inertial measurement unit that senses the angle, a PID can controller and a high power brushless motor driver that drives that wheel sideways. But for this project we're going to build the version that's actually two omni wheels on a bicycle and we're just going to upgrade the hoverboard and use the electronics and the motors to make it balance. First of all I've got to make two massive omni wheels each one with 12 little wheels on so there's 24 of these wheel hubs to 3D print. There's also separate tyre parts which are printed in a very high density TPU. So that's 24 tyres and 24 hubs. Thanks to 3D Fuel for the filament for this project and lots of other projects. So check out my channel for more 3D printing projects and check out 3dfuel.com. The tyre paths were also printed with a 1.2mm nozzle and that's extremely tough actually. So I need to insert them now. There is a little um, ridge there you can see that goes in the middle to lock it in. But that's impossible to push in by hand. So luckily I've got a hydraulic press and once I've broken the back of it then it's not too hard to press that in. But I did need the hydraulic press all the way down and when it's in they're never ever coming out. So there's one of those inserted. I did print these with a big brim on so they stuck to the print bed. I cut these off with a knife but it's still left a bit of elephant's foot so I'm just taking that off in the disc sander so we get a nice contour that matches the circumference of the wheel. So there's all 24 wheels for my two Omni wheels, each with 12 wheels. And of course that took quite some time to print and assemble. But now we need some hubs, so we're going to CNC some parts out of plywood and also 3D print some more parts. Each hub is actually made of two lots of two layers, but here's two of the layers which I'm going to glue and screw together. And I'm going to paint those black so it matches the black ties and the orange parts which I still need to 3D print. Just a quick ad for my 3D printing sponsor, thanks to Lulzbot 3D Printers for supporting my channel with 3D printers. I'm using the 1.2mm nozzle again here to make these parts really tough. And of course I need 24 of these again to match my hubs and wheels. So those are going to fit into the places I left in the CNC plywood and the wheels fit in between. Thanks to Simply Bearings for all of the bearings that are in this project, there's two for each of the wheels. And of course one of those fits into each end of my little wheels so they can rotate. And I'm going to mount those on some 8mm stainless steel bar, just like so. And there we can see we've got the bearing in each end and that wheel runs perfectly well, just like a skateboard wheel or anything else. 
That of course fits into the orange 3D printed part, but it's really hard to get tolerance parts with such a fat nozzle, so I've made the holes much bigger, and then made a little shim part with a thinner nozzle that's going to be glued into each one. I'm using a washer on each end as a little spacer so we can get those wheels in there and they don't rattle around, and then of course that stainless steel bar fits into each of those shim parts. So there's one half of the wheel assembled, but what we'll find is if we try and roll it, obviously there's a massive flat spot in between the two wheels. This is only six wheels though, and I said we need 12 per Omni wheel. So in fact what we've got is another massive 3D printed spacer, and then we've got another layer, and those wheels are offset, so they overlap each other, and we get a constant curved radius. On top of the whole stack we've got a big 3D printed spacer, and we've got a 3D printed pulley, and that's an HTD profile belt pulley. Yes, and of course we've been making two of these all along, so we've got two wheels for our bike, so now we need to make some kind of bike frame or body or something. Yep, it's lots more CNC plywood in both 18 and 12 mil, and all of that glues together basically to make a kind of box with some internal pieces, and we'll look at what those are for in just a moment. So we've got a box that's got two big round holes in one end and in the other end it's got two small round holes. And then the other half of the body is this weird L shaped looking part which again has some internal verticals and that's got these oblong shaped holes, one on the outside and one on one of the internal parts. So here they are together, this is making up the whole body of the bike. But before we carry on assembling that, it's time for a quick ad from the video's sponsor, which is PV Case. Now, PV Case is a next generation AutoCAD based piece of PV software focused on automation and accuracy. It allows you to simulate the actual location of a solar plant from the earliest stages of planning, incorporating 3D topographical data points. So, PV Case is the ideal choice for companies undertaking large commercial and industrial projects, as well as utility scale plants. The software really is intuitive and has streamlined processes to help reduce the learning curve and improve productivity. Features include everything from the prototyping stage, electrical design, stringing, shading and terrain analysis, and automatic generation of construction documentation. So PV Case really does enable engineers and designers to take the project all the way through from its initial conception to the procurement phase. This really is an end-to-end -end approach which saves time and reduces effort. It's streamlined so you don't have to switch between tools or other software platforms. And PV Case has recently acquired Anderson Optimization, the world's most popular solar sighting software platform. Other features include slope analysis, piling and collision analysis, automated topographical 3D cabling, side-by-side -side design comparison, and rapid 3D building preparation. Try PV Case for free today by following the link in the video description. Right, let's get this bike together. And of course I painted that black again so it matches the wheels, and also painted the inside black as well where I could reach just in case it's caught on camera. I really love making things out of plywood and chunky 3D prints, so of course there's a whole bunch more prints here, and some more bearings, again from Simply Bearings. So I've printed those holders there in 1.2mm nozzle, and the internal part in a finer nozzle to tolerance it again, which is a really good tip. So those bearings fit on the internal parts, and then I've got a clamp for a 5025 piece of steel that fits on the internal of that bearing. Those fit right on the inside there, and I'm going to put this piece of steel through as a square axle into a round hole. So it clamps on there, you can see there's some bolts to do it up tight, and that allows it to rotate properly. And as you can probably guess, the other half of that axle goes into the square holes in the other half. So now the two halves of this can split just like the hoverboard, so we've got that big split in the middle there with the axle, so the axle's fixed into that side, and it's on bearings in that side. So now we need to put some axles on the end and put the wheels on. With hindsight, I probably should have had one axle that ran all the way through, but I didn't think of it, and now my wheel axles are too small, and I really wanted a fat axle in the middle, but there we go. I wasn't sure if the wood would be too soft, and it would get gouged by the axle, so I made this 3D printed part with a shim in it, that's got another big fat part printed with a fat nozzle and then a finer part to tolerance it up. So those are screwed on there and I've got some 20mm bright steel bar which I'm using as the axle for the wheel. And all of that rotates on the same axis as the other pivot point. 
So my axle is stationary, the wheel rotates around it on the bearings in its own wheel hub, so those spin nice and freely, and then we've got that extra section which is on its own bearings as well. Right, so as you'd imagine, it goes something like this. So I'm gonna have some handlebars at the front here to hang on to, then I'm gonna have foot pegs at the back, and that's gonna allow me to push on this section to move it so that we can move the two halves independently, or we can lean on them both and operate it just like a hoverboard, but basically long ways. So now we need to do something about this to hold it in the middle so it's sprung or something, and put all the other bits and pieces on, including the motors and the electronics from the original hoverboard. But of course we've got omni wheels instead of just normal wheels like the hoverboard, and that means it can slide backwards and forwards. It also goes sideways of course, just like the hoverboard would be, but turn 90 degrees, and I'm really happy with how those wheel contours have turned out, so they're completely round, unlike the original one I made on the bike with the skateboard wheels. To hold the two halves straight, I've got these things that look a bit like door knockers attached, and those are sprung with a bit of bungee to each other, so it holds the back in the middle perfectly straight with the front of the bike. Obviously they've got little wheels on so they run quite smoothly, and that means I can push them. They're also sprung to the middle piece there, which means in the middle it centres properly. So now the whole bike can lean together, just like you'd lean forward or backwards on a hoverboard, but I've got foot pegs there, which means I can swivel the back independently, and that means I should be able to turn on the spot. So now it's time to mount the hoverboard motors. So yeah, we're gonna make some more pieces out of steel to hold that so we can get the belt tension nice and tight. So I'm cutting up some box and some plate and drilling holes in the plate here, and then I'm using some cutting compound here, and we're just gonna go and tap those to M8. The plates with the holes in get welded onto the box section at 90 degrees, and that gives us two things that look like this. So I've made a 3D printed pulley with a flange on, and that screws onto the hoverboard wheel with the mounting holes that already existed with exactly the same screws that were already there. And that whole thing mounts onto the metal pieces I made with the existing hoverboard bolts and the mounting hardware. I've 3D printed the pieces with a channel in which is going to allow those to slide up and down to tension the belt. So I've got one fitted there and one below it, that steel fits in there, and then it can be pulled up and we can make that belt nice and tight. So we probably need some sort of screw adjuster to uh, make that belt tight, but what I'm doing for now is I've just 3D printed a tower that's exactly the right size, and I'm just going to wedge that in there, and then we can do some testing and see if this works at all. There have been quite a few other channels which have attempted to put bigger wheels on hoverboards, including this project from the queue. The problem is that if the wheel is bigger then the vehicle will go faster and the drive will have less torque, which is going to upset the tuning of the hoverboard, so it won't balance as well as it used to. To solve this I calculated my belt reduction so the velocity of my vehicle remains the same as the hoverboard wheel would have driven it if it was still touching the ground, which is about 3.63 to 1. To save any accidents I've got a motorbike brake lever and that's got the brake light switch on it, which switches on when you press it. So that's going to switch on a big contactor rated at 200 amps that's going to turn the power onto the whole bike, and that means if I fall off I can let go and then the power cuts off rather than the thing spinning out of control or anything bad. The original battery was only 2 amp hour, so I'm going to get rid of that, and instead we're going to use two 5S packs to make 10S in total, and those are 5 amp hour, so it should give me a bit more run time. I 3D printed a battery holder, and you'll notice it's kind of got this gap in the middle, and that's basically a saddle which fits onto the axle in the fixed part where it doesn't rotate. So we're going to put the batteries in there, and in front of that we've got the other part we just saw, which is the part that holds the contactor, and also its own battery to turn it on. Now remember the hoverboard electronics actually need to be mounted upside down, so there's optical sensors face upward, so I've made two mounting plates for that. And those fit in, of course, to each half of the bike, so that we can turn them independently to turn on the spot. And I put orange tape over the optical sensors, so it thinks I'm standing on the hoverboard and it just turns on straight away, otherwise that's going to be really tricky to manage. And yes, of course, I've extended the hoverboard wires for the Hall effect sensors and for the power, so they reach all the way up. So obviously it doesn't stand up on its own, so I've got a wooden box to prop it up on, so let's get rid of that, and then let's see if I can actually ride on this. Now we've got the dead man's handle, which basically turns on the power, then I extended the actual logic switch from the hoverboard that turns it on. So initially I can balance on it, but it won't stop spinning round for some reason, so it seems like there's something weird about the angle of those boards which sense the angle in each half of the hoverboard. I don't think my carpentry was that bad, and I'm not really sure why it's doing this, but we need to solve it before I can try and ride it. 
So I've shimmed those boards and that's actually quite a bit of a, an angle that we need to make them to get them level. So let's try that again and see what happens now. So I think that shim's going to need some fine tuning. It's going the other way a bit now, but basically it's actually not too bad to ride on. It's quite a lot harder to make it go where you want than on a hoverboard because you can move your ankles with a hoverboard, of course, to kind of tilt the board backwards and forwards and make those minute adjustments. With this, I can't do that really. I kind of have to shift my whole mass left and right to get it to go anywhere. And if I want to turn, then I've <laughs> effectively got to lean one way with the top of the bike and push my feet the other way and keep my mass in the middle, which is actually a really difficult thing to do. But after a bit of practice, I managed to work out how to do this and make it go where I want. I think we maybe do need another solution, and I'm not sure that swiveling the back and front of the bike here to make it turn is actually going to be very easy at all. Um, but there we go. So here we go. I can just about bring the back round there if I kick on the right-hand side. And here I'm managing to swivel the front to one side, and the back to the other side, which is actually very difficult to do when you're sitting on it. I think what we probably need is something like servos controlling the angle of those boards. And then I'll have controls either on the foot pegs or on the handlebars, so I can actually tilt the boards and still sit upright on the bike. So maybe having the bike split into two halves is overkill really, or not very much of a practical solution. So I think in the future perhaps, and there is going to be a part two for this, we're going to do something else so that we can go and decide what angle the front and the back thinks it's at, even if it's actually upright. So, probably need some practice and some more thought on that. And of course we need to be to drive the bike forwards and backwards. At the moment there's nothing to drive those Omni wheels, but the idea is that it will go forwards. So we're going to put some thrusters on in part two.